Well, it is knife story time on the Apostle P channel. No, it's actually knife community story time. Wow. Guys, you need to be sitting down for this one. Get yourself something to drink. and uh, It's pretty cool. Stay tuned. Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 22 December 2014 and oh, this is just overwhelming, this story I'm about to share with you and this blade I'm about to share with you. A couple months ago, <clears throat> I have a viewer in Germany named Roland. Uh, on YouTube, we know his, him as Jack Sabenza and he emailed me and then called me from Germany to ask if I would receive a drop ship knife, <clears throat> sharpen it and send it on to him, which I was happy to do. I had a great conversation with him on the phone and then another conversation subsequently. And um, I did, I, I got his uh, Ritter Griptilian and sharpened it and sent it to him. <clears throat> and he was very happy to get it, very happy with the work I did. And somewhere along the line as we were talking, he told me he'd like to send me a gift. And that, uh, that was a little overwhelming in and of itself because I had done one job for him. I think when he offered, I, he hadn't even received his knife yet. And he told me that he had this old fixed blade, Puma fixed blade, <clears throat> that had been sitting in his safe since he bought it new 20 years ago. And he thought it should go to someone who would actually use it. And, you know, so I completed the job, sent him his knife, um, told him it was on the way. He emailed me when, when, uh, when he got it, raved about it, <clears throat> and reminded me that he was sending on this knife. And I had kind of forgotten about our first conversation. But I thanked him and, and, you know, waited for it to come and didn't think much more of it. And then one day, a couple weeks later, I get this package from Germany and this was what was inside. This beautiful hardwood hinged box with brass fittings and then I opened it. You know, I was expecting maybe a, a Puma original Bowie, you know, a, a knife we can buy here in the States for $100, $125. And, very high high number of production knife and I figured you know since Roland lived in Germany it probably wouldn't cost him that much and uh, <clears throat> he'd had it for a while and what a great gesture that he would do something like that and then then I opened the box and <laughs> oh guys let's look what's inside of this pristine box with high density foam holding the pristine leather sheath. I think I might be the only one who's ever even inserted the knife into this sheath, which I did once. And then let's look, oh guys, this is not a Puma original Bowie. This is a model I had never seen before. Kind of bring it up close so you guys can get a good look at it. This is the Puma Cougar. Model number 126500. Handmade Puma Cougar, Zollingen, Germany. Gorgeous stainless steel bolster, integral cross guard, stainless rivets, jacaranda wood handle, beautiful stainless pommel lined pommel and bolster, lanyard hole, just take a look at this beautiful thing. I looked at it, I marveled at it, and then I made the mistake of going on the internet <clears throat> to research it. It says Hen Design. 
The designer's name, I think, is Robert Hen, H-E-H-N, or H-E-N-N. Not a Bowie, not a clip point. It's a drop point with a swedge. But like I said, I made the mistake of going online to research it because I had never seen it. <clears throat> I couldn't believe what they cost. This is not a $125 knife. Not by a long shot. And when I sort of dis discovered what it was worth, I became overwhelmed and humbled. And I thought, <clears throat> what do I do with it? Um, <laughs> it cost enough money that it made me think twice or four times about ever using it. So I emailed Roland to let him know I had it and how beautiful it was, and I thanked him profusely and uh, asked him again, you know, how long he'd had it, because I knew they made this knife for about 25 years, starting in the early mid 80s and up till just a couple years ago. In fact, there are still new ones available on a couple websites <clears throat> for a number I'm not going to share, but it suffice to say <laughs> it'll blow your mind. Got to wipe this blade down. So Roland reminded me in his response that he gave me this knife because he wanted to give it to somebody who'd use it. <laughs> I was sharing this news with my buddies Toad Sticker and One All's Pub and Campfire Talk and when I shared that bit of information with them they, they all told me you got to use it. So I will. Oh, guys, I'm just blown away. Um, coming from a guy who is a viewer and a customer who he owes me nothing. Has a level of appreciation for, I guess, for the contribution I make to our YouTube knife community and for the service I provide that he gave me something that was of such great value. Uh, but aside from that, and Roland, thank you so much. Thank you again, and I will use it. Let's talk about then what we got here um, and what we'd use it for. Well, we have a, a 6.1 inch blade, and in German, <clears throat> they say a 6 and 1 ninth. Um, and the overall length, 11 and 3 sevenths. <laughs> so, so, like 6.1 inch blade. Overall length of 11.4 inches, that gives us a, a handle length of about 5.3 inches. <laughs> Guys, look at that. Oh. <laughs> Blade thickness is five and a half millimeters. So what's that, about 215 thousandths thick, just shy of a quarter inch of thickness. The blade steel is something we don't usually see, 440B. So that's 440 series stainless with more carbon than 420 or 420HC, not quite as much as 440C. It's supposed to be very tough. So it isn't going to be the greatest edge holder in the world, but very corrosion resistant, very tough, very resistant to impact. One thing you see on all Pumas, Puma Bowies, if you look right and right forward of the signature, you're going to see a little speck. That's the Rockwell hardness test. They do that to every single blade when they're done. Look at this gorgeous tapered tang. What does that do for balance? Well, that, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Look at that, guys. It's an 11.4 inch knife, precisely handmade to balance right in the index finger groove. Looking at that blade profile, that flat saber grind, 
coming out of that well over 200,000 inch stock to a pretty thin edge behind that edge bevel. Thickens up at the tip quite a bit. <clears throat> we got us a chopper here, don't we? This knife was designed and marketed as a field knife, not a hunting knife. So it's a lot beefier knife than the original Bowie. Not as broad a blade as the White Hunter. Doesn't have that marble skinning profile like the White Hunter does. This is more of an all-purpose field knife, so suitable for camp tasks, for uh, <clears throat> chopping and splitting wood. Thin enough behind the edge to make feather sticks if you needed to, but really it's a chopper. And because of this telltale feature, upper and lower finger guards, um, yeah, it's a fighting knife. And oh, what a fighting knife it is. Um, mm. You know, if you were on a Yukon expedition, and you might run across the odd large cat, the black or brown bear, or the bad guy, you'd be pretty well armed if you had to rely on this as your last ditch weapon, wouldn't you? And guess what? At the first opportunity, when I go on an adventure that requires or suggests this type of a tool, it will go with me. It will not sit in a safe. Take a look at the work. The gorgeous grain in that jacaranda. Beautiful hand finishing on the hardware. Came pretty doggone sharp too. Not hair splitting sharp, but great working edge. Shall we? Let's uh Let's slide it in there. Great fit. Good retention without even oh, without even snapping it. Just fits like a glove. What gorgeous craftsmanship. <clears throat> Roland, thank you again, my friend. You have no idea how much this means. What a blessing. What a Christmas present. Just thought you guys would like to see this. Oh, grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word is sharp. <clears throat>